we've gathered enough evidence to finally draw a conclusion. Ok, so why again was only evolution considered? Because the alternatives are creation and intelligent design. This is the list of problems to those alternatives. And so these are the reasons to consider them pseudoscience. And the alternatives are therefore eliminated beforehand. If evolution is true, we should not find large contradictions from the evidence. So let's see. Let's arrange the fossil record to the timeline. It said that the first bacteria evolved into existence about 3.5 billion years ago. Then the first animals were all sea life that evolved 540 million years ago. This evolved into land life 390 million years ago, in the form of tetrapods, which means four-legged. 230 million years ago they evolved into dinosaurs, which later got extinct about 65 million years ago. Then 150 million years ago the birds arose from the dinosaurs, and 125 million years ago the first mammals showed up. Then 50 million years ago the mammals evolved into sea mammals, like whales. Three million years ago the first humans showed up. All these new groups should have had transitions from one distinct group to the other. Those are said to be found in the fossil record. Let's make some space on the screen. We are going to show the most important and famous transitions here. The Tillabite as one of the first complex life forms. Tiktelic as the transition from fish to tetrapods, Archaeopteryx as the dinosaur to bird transition, Rhodocetus as the transition to whales, and finally Lucy as the shared ancestor of apes and humans. Note that these are all artist impressions. So let's show the evidence. The Cambrian trilobite is a complete animal, even with complete eyes. This is known as the Cambrian Explosion, and it doesn't show any transitions. Tiktelic. First the silicant used to be considered the ancestor of tetrapods, until living ones were found that showed it couldn't walk. It's replaced by Tiktelic. The evidence shows exactly the same problem with Tiktelic as with the silicant. It can't have walked. It had weak fins that cannot support the weight of Tiktelic. Then the birds. Some fossils are considered feathered dinosaurs. However, there is no evidence for feathers with any of these. Archaeopteryx is the oldest fossil that really shows feathers. But it also shows it was a real, complete bird. Not a transition. Parasitus was considered the transition between land animals and whales. New evidence showed it couldn't be, so now Rhodocetus is the transition. But the evidence is rather incomplete. So the interpretation of transition is based on what we don't see, not on what we see as evidence. Lucy is a combination of a chimpanzee and a human skeleton, which were found 200 meters apart. Neanderthals were slightly different than us, but there is no compelling evidence as to why we should consider them not human. The variety in dogs is much greater for example. So technically these fossils are the most prominent and famous pieces of evidence for evolutionary theory. It are the remnants of a fish, a bird, an incomplete skeleton and a chimpanzee. So much for evidence for evolution. Here we've put the pieces of the evidence in the timeline. This is all the evidence there is to support fossil transitions. Now the evidence for the dating method. Radiometric dating supports evolutionary theory. Sometimes. And when it doesn't, evolutionary theory itself is the evidence to reject the dating. To scientists, it's more important to find what's buried together than the dates following from radiometric dating. So evolutionary theory itself is support for the dating of evolutionary theory, no matter what the evidence is. Even when we use this method, there are a lot of fossils that eventually end up with the wrong timing. So that means the geologic layers that have gone through a procedure to define the date of the layer, 
contain fossils that shouldn't be buried in that layer according to the theory. Such as this human fossil, which is at least 7 million years too early. Or this one, that is more than 90 million years early. And if this is a bird, then it's just as old as the oldest dinosaurs. That means it cannot have evolved from dinosaurs. Beside that, the so-called feathered dinosaurs, which didn't even have feathers, were about 100 million years too late. Over 400 modern species are found buried together with dinosaurs. Also, soft tissue in dinosaur bones and radiocarbon dating show that the dinosaurs cannot be as old as 65 million years, which is the date the dinosaurs are supposed to be extinct. Tetrapod footprints are found to be 10 million years older than the so-called transition tectelic. There are pollen found of modern trees in the Precambrian, and there are many, many living fossils. The age of the fossils that are similar to today's species are in the hundreds of millions of years, even up to 3.5 billion years. You never ever find a higher animal mixed in with a lower one. You never find a lower one trying to swim its way to the higher one. People have looked and looked and looked. They have not found a single one. Well, these are some of the anomalies that are not found anywhere in the world, according to this guy. Now, one could argue for the feathered dinosaurs that are too late for the theory and living fossils do not have to be a problem for evolutionary theory. However, fossils that are too early are really a problem for the theory. Something cannot form before its ancestor. And when the speed of evolution is so variable that it can stand still for 3.5 billion years, and also go very fast in only a few million years, it would mean that the speed of evolution is just that, variable. How are we supposed to make formulas out of that? So are fossils never out of place? We just showed they are. But some fossils are indeed never found buried together, such as a trilobite and a rabbit. This is considered to be because of evolution. They say the rabbit did not exist before the trilobite was extinct. But the coelacanth is also never found buried together with the rabbit. And the coelacanth is a living fossil. So evolution is not the answer for this case. There is another reason to why the rabbit never got buried together, even though they have been alive at the same time. If this is so for this case, then that might just as well apply for other cases. Are there alternatives possible? Well, yes. If they lived at the same time, they can't just be buried separately for a number of reasons. This illustration is just an example, but the point is that it is never considered. The dinosaur extinction is questionable for reasons we have mentioned before. A third reason is that humans made drawings of dinosaurs. Their scientific level wasn't as good as ours, so they couldn't have based their ideas on the skeletons in a museum. Note that complete skeletons of dinosaurs are extremely rare. The drawings we make today are very often based on combined skeletons. These aren't. By the way, 200 years ago they weren't called dinosaurs, they were called dragons. So far the evidence does not show evolution is a scientific established fact. The theory is largely contradicted by the evidence. Alternatives are not considered, not because of the evidence, but the theory is a mere presupposition. All the alleged transitions that do not have evidence would be unique events even if they would have happened. Next point, is evolution falsifiable? How does science work? Well, one way to do it is to form a theory. From that theory you can set up a hypothesis. Then you can test the hypothesis. If the test confirms the hypothesis, it supports the theory. 
the theory shows to have some explanatory power. If the test rejects the hypothesis, the theory is false. That's how to falsify a theory. One of the strong arguments for evolutionary theory, they say that multiple investigations show exactly the same evolutionary tree. So both the anatomy and the DNA of a whale and a land mammal are similar for example. However, this is very often not the case. In much more than 50% of the cases, similar features of animals and plants are shown to be not because of shared ancestors. Their shared ancestors did not have this property. Each different analysis of the evidence shows a completely different tree. So instead, it is a prioritizing system. DNA is considered the most important evidence to build the evolutionary tree from. Only when it's not available, such as in fossils, the body features are used to complete the evolutionary tree. This is also done when DNA fails to make a conclusion possible. However, sometimes it isn't possible to draw a sound conclusion. The platypus doesn't make sense in any way, it's investigated. It has a mixture of properties, both in its body features and in its DNA. This means the evidence should falsify evolution. However, when shared ancestors aren't the answer, an alternative explanation is inserted to catch the problem. That means that multiple pathways lead to the same answer. The theory is confirmed. In a lot of papers, evolutionary theory is hailed for its extreme explanatory power. We have seen more examples of this. Evolutionary theory predicted pretty people to be more fertile. When research showed that this wasn't the case, the result was explained by evolutionary theory. This is not evidence for a good theory, this is actually bad science. Because when all paths lead to the confirmation of the theory, the theory is unfalsifiable. Is evolution observable? Only evolution that happens today. The majority were unique events that supposed to have happened millions of years ago, spread out over millions of years. We can absolutely not observe that. Is it repeatable? Have we evolved a trilobite in the laboratory? Can we make tectalic walk? Can we give a dinosaur feathers? Can we evolve cows into whales? We can't! It isn't repeatable. Experiments show fruit flies evolved into fruit flies, no matter what we expose it to. Is evolutionary theory based on physical laws? This is the evidence that life can form from non-life. Actually, there isn't the slightest piece of evidence that that is possible. According to the theory, all inventions in biology evolved, so they are uninvented. They just happen to grow there because of natural selection. However, when multiple dependencies are needed to be met before it works, natural selection cannot do it. We observe today that inventions can only come from intelligent design. Chaos cannot form information by chance. Our DNA consists of as much as an encyclopedia of information. So actually, evolutionary theory violates quite a lot of physical laws. Evolutionary theory has all the properties to consider it pseudoscience. So when we put evolution and creation side by side, they are in the same position. One of these issues can actually be fixed. The presupposition. When you have a murder investigation and there are two suspects, you will have a presupposition if you consider only one of them a suspect. If you try to avoid that by considering the other one the only suspect, that would be a presupposition as well. How to fix this is rather easy. Consider both, then neither of them is a presupposition. Let's see what happens to the rest of this list in that case. Both, if they would have happened, would still be a unique event. Both are unfalsifiable. Neither of them can really be observed, because it happened in the past. 
and we'll get back to the repeatability issue. Both of them, if they would have happened, would indeed violate known physical laws. We can just conclude that that somehow has happened. Now for the repeatability. The platypus doesn't make sense to evolution. It has a mixture of properties from a large variety of other species that cannot be all from a common ancestor. The same applies for its DNA. However, properties returning in different machines or inventions are common in created objects. The wheel and the wheelbarrow and the car are very similar, but they don't have a shared ancestor. It's just that the design of the wheel makes sense in both objects. If creatures would be created, then their shared properties make sense. One could object to this conclusion because theoretically everything can be created. But that's not really an argument. Not everything would be created. There are objects that are clearly not created. Simply because they don't have any properties of an invention and we know of possible physical laws of how they came to be. Other objects are clearly created, which we can see, even if we don't see them being created and even when we don't know who made it. Life consists entirely of stuff like that. The object can only originate from creation by somebody intelligent enough. No natural process can invent a hinge. And that is one of the simplest things we see in life forms. The conclusion isn't drawn from ignorance. Observations just show inventions are created. They cannot be not created. Experiments show it's impossible that single cells evolve into human beings. It's even impossible to evolve a fruit fly into anything else than a fruit fly. Another issue is that of bad design. Those who point to bad design issues usually don't look deeply enough into the details of the object. When you put the specifications of the biological object next to the invention, you can see very often that the biological object outperforms our inventions. Even the evolution that we are supposed to see in the fossil record doesn't match the theory. The theory just says the eye kept on improving through time. Instead, we see the lowest geological layers contain creatures with complete eyes, and nowadays there are fish that are blind. They swim so deeply that their eyesight is no longer useful. But it is clearly visible where their ancestors used to have eyes. So the evolution of the eye is in reverse. It has not yet been possible to create life in a laboratory. Assume we would be able to do so in the future. What sentence would be more applicable? 1. Life can form naturally. 2. Life can be created. And that would be number 2. So creation may be repeatable. However, non-life evolving into life so far seems ever so much more impossible. Let's summarize it once more. Real fossil transitions are all missing. Evolutionary theory is unfalsifiable. The evidence shows large anomalies to the theory. Alternatives are not considered. Life consists of things we only observe to arise from creation. And there isn't the slightest piece of evidence that life can arise from non-life. We have reached the end of the series Evolution the Evidence. Thank you for watching and see you later.